Hi, everybody. I'm delighted today to have a lovely lady with me called Aisha. Um, she's going to tell you a little bit about what she does. So, Aisha, could you be kind enough to give us an introduction, please? Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and um, I'm, I'm delighted to be here having this conversation with you. Um, my um, background is in venture capital and in banking, and I've helped uh, businesses with their debt and equity um, financing um, roughly about 30 million pounds. Um, oh, gosh, no, I'm, I'm fumbling. I'm fumbling. Sorry. It's OK. We can cut it out. Don't worry. Do you want me to ask the question again? <laughs> Yes, please. So Aisha, it would be lovely if you could give our audience a little bit um, of your background and experience, please. Thank you, Paul, for this opportunity. Delighted to be here. Um, my background is in banking and venture capital, and I've assisted small businesses grow their businesses um, with either debt and equity, um, totaling something about in the region of 30 million um, pounds um, in total over the years. Um, I've been doing this for over 20 years and there, I guess it's fair to say that there isn't a problem that I haven't seen for small business owners, small to medium sized uh, business owners that they haven't faced. Yes, we've had various difficult economic climates, um, but they're all overcomable. Um, you know, as long as you don't get drawn into the media talk, which is all negative, then it is all overcomable. And because I've been so close to understanding how um, to help businesses grow, I felt that there is a huge market that needs that kind of assistance, which my experience is quite unique in terms of having venture capital and banking combined. Um, and I'm an MBA, so I have that strategic focus and strategic mind as well. Um, so combining all three things together has a bring allows me to bring a very different perspective on the way I help businesses grow. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I, I now do business coaching um, and focus on revenue growth. So touching on what one of the things you said just now, I'm quite keen to explore this is from your point of view, what role does mindset play in business growth? Huge. Um, my, the mindset is the foundation of everything um, in business or even otherwise. So anything that's worth developing, the mindset is where it starts. So if, for instance, you're of the mindset that sort of gets swayed very often in terms of, you know, this person is experiencing this problem and that person is experiencing this problem and, oh, my gosh, you know, the, just everybody within the small business world is experiencing various different problems then chances are that you are actually going to find it very difficult to grow your own business because you're not focusing on your growth. Your mindset is being influenced by external chatter. And at that point, you know, even if you were going to succeed, you're just not going to allow that to happen because what you've allowed your mindset to do is just sort of be taken over by negativity of others and of factors that you are completely out of your control. Um, so it's really, really important to make sure that you, your mindset is in line or aligned with the intention that you have for your business at all times. It doesn't matter what's happening in the economy. It doesn't want to happen. It does not matter what's happening in the um, wider world, for instance. If you've got the intention to grow your business, you can grow it in any economy. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting to hear that because I think mindset, you know, people hear a lot about it or they hear the word, they hear the term used a lot, but without actually understanding a great deal about it, what it means. So moving on from that, why should business owners focus on generating revenue versus, should we say, making products or having service and sales? Well, what I want to do here in terms of answering this question is to differentiate between revenue and sales. Um, sales is a part of revenue, the overall revenue a business makes. And what I've found within the small and medium um, um, section of businesses is that they're, they're obsessed with selling. Um, you know, they're just focused on selling and they're not looking at the overall viability of the business. There's so many business owners who don't enjoy the sales process. 
um, but they get hung up on that factor that, oh gosh, I can't sell. So I can't sell, so I'm not making much money and I'm not making much money, so I can't um, honor my liabilities and I'm cash strapped and I've got cash flow issues. And all of that results from just focusing on generating sales. Now, what I want to do is I want to get business owners to start focusing on revenue generation. Revenue generation incorporates making sales of their product or service, but it also has a lot of different other ways, other ways that a business can make money. Um, and just because you're not generating enough product or service sales at that moment in time doesn't mean that your business, business should potentially collapse or you should uh, experience um, major cash flow bottlenecks. You can add on other services to your um, overall offering, which are not just talking about selling your service or product. For instance, you could potentially look at whether you can license your whatever it is that you're offering. If it's a service specifically, can it be licensed? If it can be licensed, you've got another revenue stream right there, and which can help with addressing cash flow bottlenecks. Um, can you look at um, packaging your expertise and offering a course, for instance? The course side of things is where, again, you know, you can sell the courses as um, um, a, a lower uh, at a lower level than perhaps some of your services may be um, being offered. Um, could you make your business into a franchise, for instance? You know, there's so many different directions that you could actually take revenue generation and still have a viable business if you stop focusing on just the sales aspect of your product or sales. Um, a fourth, fourth thing you could get into is affiliate marketing. A lot of business owners don't even think about becoming affiliates for products they're already using. You know, they, they're using them, they're customers, and why not talk to other people and, and, and tell them about it? There is absolutely no shame to say, hey, you know, I, I like this product. We use it as a business and we think that this brings us X, Y, Z advantages to our business. And if you buy from this link that I'm providing you, I will get a, a cup back. So yeah. again, it's just about being creative in business, uh, revenue generation. Um, running a business is more than just making sales of your product and service. And that's where I want to start people, uh, business owners to start focusing on. That's really interesting. because I, I, I suppose through my own life experience and business, I see so many ideas that people have that they've implemented. And I'm thinking, although it's outside of the domain I, that I work in myself, because I've just got a very busy, curious mind. I often look at something and think, wow, that would make a great franchise. I wonder if they, and I wonder if they've thought about it because they probably haven't. They're so probably buried and they're so focused on their own on their own business. But you think that'd be quite a, a great opportunity to to remodel and just yeah. sell it as a franchise agreement and generate revenue from. Um, because I'm sure there's a lot of good businesses out there that that could do that, but just don't even doesn't even occur to them that they've got a great product that they could franchise, you know. So and we and we all know all the big franchises around the world, McDonald's being the most obvious one, um, speaks for itself, doesn't it? So very interesting. So next question, if I may, is, so Aisha, how Absolutely. does your... and And just because the large large guys do it, this, why can't the smaller guys do it? The smaller guys are just fixated on selling, um, but they're not looking at revenue generation, and I intend to change that. That's no, good, because I think, um, and also with the franchise model, I understand... You know, the owners they put their they have their own skin in the game they put their own investment in um, and as a result they're highly motivated to to make it work so, so it seems like a good combination for some types of business for sure so if, next question for me Aisha. <laughs> 16 so, o'clock so um if i may ask so so how does your rock your revenue program help business owners build a stronger business model well, that's exactly what it is, basically, um, that, you know, the the whole point is to get them to stop focusing on the sales side of things. So in the Rock Your Revenue program, we focus on mindset and we focus on looking at their um, existing business model. Um, first of all, helping them understand what a business model is. A lot of small business owners don't even know the definition of a business model. They've just got up, they've they've got a service and they're looking for an audience to sell. So they don't actually have that structure to actually 
to start actually building a viable business from. So in the Rocky Revenue Program, these are the things that get addressed, your mindset, the actual audience that you want to be selling to, the business model that you're with. And then not only the business model, but the revenue model, because the business model and the revenue model are completely different um, um, things. To, to a lot of people, it, it probably seems like it's the same thing, but they're very, very different. Um, then sales, selling is part of revenue generation. So whether you're actually going to become a franchise or whether you're going to become a licensee or, or whether you're going to start um, offering an affiliate um, offering of some sort. I mean, you could they could themselves offer an affiliate program and generate money that way as well. That could in turn increase their sales as well. Um, so that would decrease the burden on them as a business owner to do all the selling for them, for instance. So all of this is part of the Rock Your Revenue program, which um, after the 12 week program, they actually go through that transformation where they've sort of come um, out at the end of it and said, yes, you know what? Um, I am now going to be rocking my revenue. I know I have a structure in place, which is going to allow me to stop feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm stuck with these cash flow bottlenecks. Um, I, I don't need to hate selling anymore because I've got different ways of bringing money in. And then what's gonna be the result of that transformation? they are going to start enjoying the sales process. They're going to start enjoying um, that, okay, you know what? I didn't make the sale. It's no bother. They're just going to move on to the next one because money is no longer the problem <laughs> which is causing them to hate the sales process. Yeah. So in my opinion, people hate the sales process because cash is so tight and they're desperate to bring in the cash and it's not coming and the frustrations come across. But if you have a robust business model, which Rock Your Revenue will help you develop and, and a revenue model, then you will actually stop feeling the, the frustration around money and you'll start enjoying the selling process. So the burden on you will decrease and you'll enjoy growing your business. And that's what a viable business is all about. Mm. So that's what the Rock Your Revenue program aims to deliver. Sounds good. So... So Aisha, if, if people would like to contact you to find out more, how, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Um, they can contact me directly on my social media profiles um, or um, just drop me an email at Aisha at AishaEjaz.com. Fantastic. Well, make sure we include those details in the description text as part of the post here. But that was really interesting. I'm sure many people would benefit from your service. So I encourage you to pick up the phone, send Aisha an email, look at her social media. So Aisha, I'm going to say goodbye. So thank you for coming today. It's been really- Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. I've really enjoyed talking to you and um, I'm sure we'll speak again and I wish you every success. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.